Jesus, he heals all my diseases. Wherever God's people are found, wherever prayer does abound, the glory of the Lord will shine upon us. We can be free and feel his power, so lift your hands in this hour. Let God's healing power come upon you. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's stand for the reading of the word. Therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. All things you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Father, thank you today for your mighty presence. Move in our hearts in the name of Jesus. And everyone said amen. amen. You can be seated. I want to preach today on closing every door. Paul said to Timothy, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. There is coming stronger and stronger test for the church. Stronger and stronger test for you for your home, for your marriage, for your children. We've run with the footmen, but we've not got with the horses yet. And the horses are coming. The stronger, darker days are coming. It's not going to be get greater and more glorious and more light and more joy. And forget about going back behind. Forget about that. That's, that's, that's gone. Forget about the last four years of presidency when we had a president that was copacetic towards Christian causes and, and leaned in our direction and, and pampered and pet us. So that, those days are gone. We're going to have to grow up now. We're going to have to take off our ballerina slippers and put on combat boots. We're going to have to get ready for the challenges that are coming to the church. But the true church of Jesus will always be victorious. Never one time has it ever been defeated for those who have laid hold of it and believed God, hallelujah. So he says to Timothy, be strong that's in the grace. All the things that you've heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Every sheep, every herd of sheep follow their shepherd and they hear the understanding he has of the Lord. They hear what God is saying to him. They understand him, God in the way that he understands God. They move forward at the pace he moves forward. They, they understand the spiritual things as he understands spiritual things. An under-shepherd can't take a flock someplace he hasn't gone personally. You have to walk in those steps, and then God uses you. And Paul is saying to Timothy, listen, you've heard these things from me. I've committed my teaching to you, so you commit these to faithful men. Keep them and guard them and hold on to them. Somebody say amen. You know, if God told you something 10 years ago in this church, he means it today and he'll mean it tomorrow. If God told you something to do or not to do, he means it. That's your salvation. That's your walk with God. Well, it doesn't matter what other churches do. It doesn't matter what other people do. God has committed unto you your understanding of him through this ministry. And he says in verse 3, you must endure hardship as a good soldier for no one who is engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. So it sounds like battle gear. It sounds like weapons of war. It sounds like combat boots. It sounds like a personal thinking that I am in a battle. And folks, we are in a battle. We face an unrelenting enemy who never stops scheming and trying and working, trying to crowd himself into your life, making arguments and, and all kinds of things to talk to you about. 
He, 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 he never quits the innuendo, the lies, the, the questioning. He, he's always there. He's, he's there 24-7. He'll wake you up at night talking to you. The, the enemy never stops. And the, the victory for us as the people of God is to close every door of access, every door that the enemy can slip in with. Because you see, whether it's something you, you do in the flesh or if it's something that goes on in your mind, it's still a door of access. Your mind can be a door of access to the devil. But you're called upon to cast down everything that exalts itself, every high thing that exalts itself, every ungodly, every dark thing that exalts itself. You're called upon to control your thought life. Nobody can do it but you. But you have that ability because the blood of Jesus is over you and you have the ability to cast down every thought. We have to close every door. And whether it's something we think or something that we are tempted to do, we have to learn to close the door. I believe if we will close the door, we close the door of access. And the enemy's out here, not in here. The enemy's fighting here, not in here. The enemy's out here talking, but he's not hindering anything because the peace of God rules in my heart. But it's when we open the door and the devil gets access to the inside of us that the damage is done. That's where the destruction happens. That's what the devil wants is access. He wants access access to your mind, your thought life. He wants access to your what you're doing, the things you are doing in your life. And so I want to preach to you regarding that today. I, I hope the Holy Ghost will make this so real in your life that you will do inventory and you'll look at yourself and say, Lord, is there any door of access in my life that the enemy's gaining entrance to? Because it's a spiritual thing. He's a spirit. He's unclean clean. And if you open the door, he brings in other spirits, other things, things that you used to not battle with. Suddenly now you're fighting over everything. Suddenly there's every argument against your walk with God. It's because you haven't closed the door. Hallelujah. Jesus said in the garden, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. Nothing in me. He's out there. He's not in here. So I'm going to challenge you today to, to close the door. Look at somebody and tell them, close the door now. Hallelujah. Proverbs 12, 1 says, whoever loves instruction loves knowledge. Do you love instruction? Do you love to be told? Do you love for someone to share with you where you're missing it? What needs to change? Do you love instruction? It says, Proverbs 12, 1, he who loves instruction loves life. Or loves knowledge. He, he who loves instruction loves knowledge. But he who hates correction is stupid. Get, it, get any clearer than that. He who hates instruction or correction is stupid. Come on. Do you love correction? Do you accept correction? You get a speeding ticket and you say, officer, I just want to thank you for doing your job. You're protecting this country and protecting me from myself. And I'll gladly pay this $330 fine because I was in the wrong and you're protecting me. <laughs> I'll see you in court. <laughs> that old fallen nature in us wants to defend ourselves no matter how wrong we are but we got you on camera. Uh-uh, no, that wasn't me. Well, your hair sticks up and back just like it does now. That still wasn't me. Isn't it amazing? They catch you on those pictures. You know, you ran the light and they mail it to you in the mail. I'm going to court. What? Admit you're wrong, pay the fine, listen to correction. If you won't get corrected by the government over running a light, what in the world is God going to do with you? 
We have to be people who listen to the voice of Jesus. He's going to get us from bellflower to heaven. And the Holy Ghost is the only one that knows how to get you there. And you're going to need him. You're going to need to be in his spirit and in his graces. You need to learn to say yes to the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, learn to say yes. We got to learn to say yes to God. We've got to learn to say yes to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Second Timothy chapter three. Paul describes the end times that we are in today. And they perfectly illustrate where we are in 2021 headed into 2022. Verse one, perilous times are coming. They're here. Men are lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers. They're without self-control. What about all these smash and grab robberies and all over the United States, 50, 60 people with masks just smash and go in and steal and the security guard stands there and watches them. And they let them do it. Well, you're going to have a good Christmas. You took everything out of the store. You set it up and sell it on, online. <laughs> Make money on it. It's a sign of the day that we're living in. Unloving, disobedient, unthankful, unholy. It's going to get worse, saints. Don't think it's going to get better. The condition of the world will get darker incrementally, incrementally every year. 2022, people say, oh, I'm just looking forward to 2022. I'm not. I'm praying for the rapture between now and December 31st. I'm looking to go up. Hallelujah. Because there is going to be darkness portrayed and unveiled like we've never seen before. And the people of God have no options. If we're going to make it, we got to get closer. We got to close every door that gives the devil access into our lives. Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Oh, they have a form of godliness, but they deny its power. They deny its power from such people. Turn away. Turn away, Paul said. This is the picture of the last days where we are living. Amen. Any door that you've opened up in your life, the Holy Ghost is calling you today to close it. He's calling on you to exercise self-control. He's, he's, come on, somebody say amen. I know a man one time that, that, that he got in a prayer line and, and uh, I prayed for him a lot of times and he couldn't get over smoking. And one day I prayed for him and the Lord said, draw a line in the sand and declare your freedom. Declare victory over that spirit. You know, it, it's, not, it's not just a habit. It's got spirit in it. Alcohol has spirit in it. Drugs, they have spirit. It's not, it's not the way it makes your brain feel. It's what it does to your soul. It's spirit driven. All of these things are driven by spirit. Lust is spirit driven. They're demons. They're unholy spirits that are involved in it. And that man drew a line in the sand and said, I will not smoke another cigarette. And the next day he goes to work. He's a two-pack-a-day guy, and so they have their first break, and his friend goes, they go to the break room, and his friend pulls out his pack and says, here, have one of mine. And he said, no thanks. He said, why? Why aren't you smoking? He said, I'm a non-smoker. He said, you're a non-smoker? Well, you smoked yesterday. He said, but I got prayed for at church and I drew a line in the sand and I'm a non-smoker. And the next day, other men begin to notice and they'd come by and say, hey, and it, it's like it bothered them. Hey, why don't, why don't you take one? No, I'm a non-smoker. 
Since when? Since two days ago. I don't smoke anymore. I don't smoke anymore. God has given me victory. He hooks his power to your will. And your will has to say no to the devil. And you got to mean it. Come on, somebody say amen. Oh, I'm addicted to pornography. I'm a non-pornographer. I say no to it. Turn it off. Get rid of it. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the devil never stops speaking and talking and grabbing at us. Never, never. He always works on it. Alcohol. Oh, well, Jesus turned the water into wine. He did not turn the water into alcohol. Get over it. Learn what history tells us about it from the first century with Pliny and others. I've written an article a long time ago, and I had her make 100 copies. I don't want everybody in the church to pick this up at the altar. There's two stacks here. It's called Booze in the Bible. And it explains in definitive terms about alcohol. You know, the Levitical priesthood, when they performed the sacrifices for God, they couldn't drink. They, could, they had to be non-drinkers. And it, it came after Phineas and Hophni, who were the two sons of Aaron, went in and offered strange fire, and God killed them and said, don't bury them. Take them outside the camp and throw them in a hole. And he told Aaron, don't you even act like you're, you're, you're grieving over those boys. He said, I'm mad. And the very next verse says, from that day, God designated no Levitical worker will drink alcohol. That makes me believe that both those boys were drunk. And they got careless. And instead of offering fire on God's altar, from the sacrifice, they went and got it from another campfire and offered it. And because it was strange, God killed them. And you're going to tell me that Jesus turned water into alcohol when the own Levitical priesthood were forbidden to drink? And when the Bible has so many references, nowhere in the Bible is strong drink ever condoned by God. Nowhere where anybody took strong drink does it ever give a positive view. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 says, no drunk will inherit the kingdom of God. What about that? Well, you can drink till you're drunk. Well, you got, you got to stop one short or you'll lose your soul. Well, how do you know? State of California, are you drunk? State of Texas, are you drunk? God's standard, are you drunk? The answer is, if you don't take the drink, you'll never get drunk. Stay away from it. Why? It opens a door of access to spirits that come in on, the, on that and they ensnare you and they bring you into bondage. I know what I'm talking about. I've lost two family members over this kind of thing. And I can tell you there the devil is not playing cards and games. He's out after you. And it's a, it's a thing that opens a big door. The Bible says, Proverbs 21, wine is mocker. Strong drink is raging. Why would you want to participate? And the devil works on all of us. I remember after we took this church in 1983, the next year we got to go on vacation. And Brenda and I got so excited because we'd never been on vacation. I was 33, and we had been in evangelism, and, you know, you're trying to keep from starving in evangelism, so you preach if you get a chance. And when I had a week off, that was my vacation, but I didn't really ever have a really paid vacation the next year. They said, no, no, you're, you're on salary now. So you can go. So I said to Brenda, let's go to Mexico. She said, okay, where? I said, I don't know, pick out a place, let's go. Mexican Riviera down there. So we flew down there and we stayed in this big five-star hotel and 
the first day, you know, I put on my swim trunks and I went out to the pool, had this big, massive pool. It was like maybe half an acre big. And it, and it had, in the middle of it, it had a bar. And you could swim up to it. And the bar stools were underwater about a foot. And you could sit on the bar stool and your bottom's underwater. And your arms are up on top of the thing. And you're sitting there kind of floating. I thought, this is cool. And the guy said, can I help you? And I want you to know the devil hit me. The devil said, yeah, try it out. A little frothy drink won't hurt anybody. You're on vacation. You deserve a drink today. I never touched alcohol in my whole life, but I can tell you I sat there for 20 minutes and fought a battle that raged in my soul over whether to order one of those little with an umbrella. I was going to get one with the cherry on top and a and all the stuff that goes with it and put the alcohol in there and I was going to do it. And I tell you, I was going back and forth and going back and forth and, and, and I said, well, let, let, I, I, let me swim. So I got away and I swam for a while. The devil said, he's still over there. He's still there. So I swam over there again and I sat down underwater. And the guy said, did you decide what you want? I said, I'll take a Diet Coke. He said, oh, <laughs> you don't want any good, you little yummy drink, little yummy drink. Ooh, it's yummy. Gin is rum, it's yummy. Vodka is yummy. If you put enough sugar on top of it, cuts the bite down. And I got a Diet Coke. And I told my wife the next day, I said, man, I fought the devil in the pool. I did. I had to fight. I had to resist. I had to cast down. I had to take authority. You're in Mexico. Nobody will see it. These people can't even speak English. You're safe. Nobody knows you. You're 800 miles away. Devil is such a liar. My grandpa Chambers was an alcoholic and he used to lecture all five of his children, don't ever touch alcohol, it's in our family. That spirit works in our family and that spirit's looking for access. He's looking for access. And I had family members that for years didn't drink but they caved in because of pressure, because of big preachers. We have big ministries and they socialize with alcohol and they got involved and it took them down. It was a door of access for a demon and it brought in all kinds of pain. Hello? Hello? And it's so accepted today in the world. I was at a wedding not long ago and the pastor got up there and said, uh, I'm going to pray over the food and, you know, whatever you want to drink, you know, it's, it's good. There's a bar over here. And, you know, Jesus didn't turn the water into Kool-Aid. <laughs> he turned it into wine. I wanted to stand up and say, false prophet, liar. God help us. Quit excusing sin. Acting like it's a game. It's just fun. Have you ever noticed the world can't have any fun unless they got alcohol? I got behind two men. They had all kinds of box. They had to get a box and fill up an empty box, put all of it in. I said, oh, where'd you guys go? Oh, we're going to have fun. The world can't have fun. But I tell you, there is a there's a Holy Ghost that'll make you drunk. There's the Spirit of God that'll make you happy. 
There's joy unspeakable and full of glory in God. If they could get full of God, they wouldn't have a hangover. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say amen. Give the Lord a hand clap this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know you've been tempted. I know the devil is unrelenting. I know that voice never stops, but I command you in the name of Jesus to stay clean and pure like Daniel. Stay on the other side of the line like Jesus. Learn to say no to the enemy. Hallelujah. And walk in the purity of God's power and God will flow through you and God will tear down the gates of hell using your prayer and your faith and your belief in the name of Jesus. The devil is a liar and we're not gonna be bound by anything thing that he offers to us. We're going to rise up in purity and holiness and we're going to be cried in God's eyes and clean in the eyes of the Holy Ghost. And God is going to put his blessing upon this church and upon every person who has chosen to walk the narrow path and has chosen to walk with God. Hold on to your belief. Stand in your belief of God. Hold on to your confession of faith and don't let anybody talk you out of it. Believe that God is is with you and God will come through in your life in the name of Jesus. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap today. Hallelujah. 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 I want you today to take not only one of these copies of this article, but we're going to put the anointing oil out here today and I want you to take oil home with you. And the Lord gave me this just about an hour and a half ago. He said, tell them to take the anointing oil and to walk through their home. And anything that's unclean to anoint it. And anything that needs to be turned off or tuned out or destroyed, get rid of it. Hallelujah. And ask the Holy Ghost. The Lord said if they'll ask the Holy Spirit, he'll show the darkness to them. You don't want darkness in this day that we're getting ready to descend into. You can have the darkness out there, but not in here. Walk in the light of God. Hallelujah. Just take, come on, somebody say amen. One of the men in our church did that some time ago. He took the oil, walked through his house, and the Holy Spirit said, sit down at your computer and anoint it and sanctify it. And he did. And the Lord said, take that music off your hard drive. And he started deleting and deleting and deleting. He said it wasn't satanic music, but it sure wasn't Christian. And he said, as I listened to them, as I was deleting them, I thought, wow, there is a lot of darkness in this stuff. It sets up a spirit that's able to gain access to you and your family. The devil is not playing tiddlywinks. He's after your soul. He wants your marriage. He wants your kids. You got to go to war in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Another person in our church heard a message on this of being belonging to God. And they said they went to work the next day and they sat down in the break room on their break and said there was just a magazine there and they started to pick up that magazine and the Holy Ghost said, put it down. And he said, but Lord, that's not wickedness. That's not pornography. It's just a magazine. The Lord said, I know, but there's pictures in there that you don't need to see. Put it down. I thank God I got a God that talks to me like that. Come on, somebody in there. I'm glad, I'm glad I got a God that I can't do what I want to and get by with it. That the Holy Ghost convicts me and make me feel like 700 pounds of sin and tells me what's right and wrong and gets me down and tells me about my nasty self. Somebody say, man, I'm glad I've got the Holy Ghost to keep me on this path. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me to do reference work on narrow path. And I looked up where Jesus said, Matthew, the road is narrow, it leads to heaven, and few there ever be that find it. Few there ever be that find it. Aren't you glad you're one of them? Come on, hold your hand up, put a big smile on your face. I'm glad, Lord, I'm one of them. I found this path, and I'm on this path. But it's narrow. It's narrow. There's a lot of yeses and noes in it. 
A lot of do's and don'ts. <laughs> Come on. Say amen. I found the Holy Ghost got an opinion about everything. He's nosy. He's not just nosy. What it is, it's motivated by jealousy. He's jealous over you with a godly love. He wants everything good for your life. Amen. Everything good for your life. Amen. Amen. You know, we were, went through Thanksgiving. The next day, I went into a convenience store and, and I had this hankering for something sweet because I had eaten sweets the night before, which I don't usually do. And so it had set up this craving and I walked past this glass case and there was a, a bakery that had deposited some things there. And I stopped and looked at them for a while and, and I was, there was a one, one side saying, oh, get those, all three of them. And another voice said, no, you had your day of sugar. You need to stop. And I knew that was the Holy Ghost over here. You had your sugar. Now you just get back onto the discipline I put you on because he's got me, you know, on a diet. And I thought, yeah, but if, if we had cooked all this food, we'd have it at home and we would eat off of it two or three days and that chocolate pie would take a week to eat. The Lord said, but you didn't cook. You went to a restaurant and it's all gone, so get over it. Now, I don't know why. Am I the only one that has no. conversations? The Lord just cuts me no slack. So I'm sad to say that I disobeyed and I bought all three pastries. Oh, Lewis is back there going... <laughs> yeah, I disobeyed and I brought them home. My wife said, oh my goodness, more sweets. I said, well, you know, I just got, I just kind of let go yesterday and I just feel that desire. She said, well, open up, let me look at them. So she looked at them. She said, they're not for me. That made me feel worse. Self-control when you don't have it is, is not desirable around you, right? So I picked one of them up, broke it in half. I was going to eat the jellied part in the middle, you know, just, just, just that part. And I took one bite and it was dry and didn't even taste good. I went, I heard the Holy Ghost say, Did, didn't I say back there not to get this? And you just disobeyed me? And you did it anyway? And you had to put it in your mouth? I knew that was dry. Do you believe the Holy Ghost knows all things? He knew it wasn't any good. So I wasted $4. <laughs> Threw it in the trash. Learn your lesson. Be submissive. Quick obedience. Learn to flow with God. Learn that everything he's got for you is good for you. He wants to bless you. He wants to anoint you. He wants to make the crooked path straight. He wants you to do everything that he asks you to do. If you will do that, you will have an open door to heaven and a closed door to hell. Let's stand together. Praise the Lord.